Mr. Miyagi, and this is Mr. Miyagi's workshop. Today, I'm going to talk about a build that I'm getting ready to do, an old XS650. This is a 1977 frame, and I found this with a title, which is kind of nice. But I have miscellaneous parts and pieces, an old engine. This one here is my mock-up engine. And uh, we'll just use it for building and whatever, setting up exhausts and tanks and whatever, running, running lines and stuff. But frame came with a swing arm, which was nice. I have lots of old parts and pieces I have, a set of old forks that I had, tires. Now these here are going to need to be rebuilt. These old brick stones were a good tire probably in one in that day, but they're pretty rotted and ready to fall off the rim almost. The spokes are not so good on this, kind of rusty, broke up. We'll be taking those off. Cleaning out the rim, maybe even polishing it or painting it. Same thing with the hub, changing out the bearings. And we'll do that on both the front and the rear. Now this is a brake drum system. Uh, I could have went with probably a mag wheel to run a um, disc brake, but I decided to go since I'm making this into a dual sport bike, better to run the spokes. You got a little bit more give. And these old drum brakes are pretty darn good. This one here, the shoes aren't bad on it. A little rusty on the inside, but cleaned up, it'll work just fine. I'll take you over to where I'm building the engine. This is a 19. I'm believing a 1980, I'm not sure, i got to check the numbers again, engine. This is an engine that I got from a gentleman after building another one. He just traded this in for kind of a core charge. He said the transmission on this thing was a little messed up. Now, he said the transmission wasn't working properly for shifting. It was hanging up. This little gizmo here, you should be able to churn. This is a shifter for moving the forks back and forth. And it works with another lever that goes through the engine. And that's where your uh, foot shift attaches to. Well, if that's not properly dialed in or set properly, it won't shift right. This is the bottom of the case of the engine where your starter would go. We are going to put a starter on this one along with the kick starter which mounts right in here. There's a cover. This cover is a drain and an oil pickup area. And this is a filter that attaches to the bottom of that and then sits inside. The problem with these is they get old and brittle. Now a lot of guys will try to repair these and you can but being that this material gets real brittle over time it may not last as long as you think. This is a little magnet right here that picks up any of the metal filings and stuff that's floating around in the engine. I'm going to replace this with a new one. They're not that expensive. Over here, we have pieces for the electric start, gear, cover. Put together. I've rebuilt this whole head, gone through the check there, all the clearances, nice new 
clean up valve job. So that's ready to go. Ah, oil pump. I've got new components coming for that. He's fit down. Oop, that's why it won't go. Oh. Little pin that holds this all together. Slides in there. Pump gear. These work. There we go. Outer housing. This all rotates. And that's how you get your oil. It flows in. Now if you look at this side cover, which is an old side cover that I'm trying to save. You can see in this area right here, it was damaged. That was a viewport for looking to see what your oil level is. But they all come with a dipstick, so if you monitor your oil, you shouldn't have a problem. The pump itself fits down in this area. Kind of right in there. And that's driven off of your clutch housing. So that it pumps the oil. And then off of that, there's a gear that goes on this that drives your tach tachometer that drops down in here. Now I ordered new gear, the little pump pump housing. I ordered all this new, the star and the outer ring. Um, this is probably okay, but I prefer to add and uh, go new. Now they make an aftermarket uh, pump for this that's supposed to be more pressure and whatever, but over the years that I've played with these, I haven't really seen a, that much of an improvement on your flow. This is that shifter I was talking about. It hooks onto the dogs, comes across, and that's where your foot shifts. But we're going to have a session on this, on, on the build. Okay, this is the crankshaft. We've checked out the bearings, clearances. on it bearings now I, I did order the bigger outside bearing and this and the other side the bigger outside bearing here is it's the drive side so it gets a lot of pressure and a lot of torque on it so I kind of like to replace those necessarily if they're if you don't feel any bad movement in them and Pop the gears off and inspect the rollers and the inside of the races. And if they look good and they feel good, usually they're pretty good. A lot of these old motorcycles probably don't have more than 16,000 miles on them, which isn't much for a, an old engine like this. The problem is if they've sat and gotten water in them or con condensation, then you may have a problem. But you can get the bearings and stuff. Rebuilding the crank is not an easy process. You don't want to do that unless you know what you're doing. Now you can rephase these uh, crankshaft, and what I mean by that is that this is right now is set up as a 360 fire. This one comes up to compression. And they're both going up on compression, but one fires here, takes it around, then the next one fires. Well, you can change these to a rephase crank, and Hughes Handbuilt can do that for you. He's a good guy to know. I've had him do a couple of my cranks and cams. And what they do is they change this to a two 
277. These are at, literally are splined. So he puts them together and then they weld everything in place and makes a nice smoother running rig. But I'm leaving this one the way it is. I'm going to run it, run that and I'm not going to change the cam or anything else on them. But the cam, I checked out the cam, the lobes and stuff. This is looking really good. The sprocket is excellent. Drive chain. A lot of times I'll replace these if they're damaged or anything, but this is in pretty good shape, so I will reuse this. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build this motor and this whole build as cheaply as possible. Chain runners, you can get these. These fit inside the cylinders. So it's a guide for the chain, for the timing chain. Sometimes you need to replace those if they're all wore out. But you can see that one's in pretty darn good shape. Same with this follower here. Not bad. Clutch. That's in pretty darn good shape. I've mic'd the uh, plates on it. They're within tolerances. There's maybe one or two in there that I'll replace. But other than that, pretty good to go. These are the cylinder bolt, uh, bolt studs that what I like to do is I like to go through and clean up all the threads and where the, where they bolt into the this the case on the engine is to clean the clean out the um, where they screw into with a tap well don't forget a package today right after doing this morning filming and this is for the excess One thing I, <clears throat> I was saying that I was going to use that uh, primary cover, and I found this one fairly reasonable with even the pump in place. Quite a decent cover. Little abrasions here and there. But that'll clean up nicely. I'll use that other cover on another build. I just want to double check that a little more. This will get me moved right along. So anyway, that's my plan. Um, I've got more parts and pieces upstairs in my loft that I'll be going through. I've ordered some engine parts. I have a complete new cylinder set up there, board 20 over, over that we will install and set the engine up, like I said, with electric start and kick start. Now this is going to be a process, so there's going to be several of these episodes on how to do this. And if you like this, please like, share, and subscribe. And I will try to do my best to entertain you. Thank you from Mr. Miyagi's Workshop. Bye for now.